Okay, so we'll, we'll start for a few questions for allergy and immunology because it's important uh, for step three. They say a review allergy and immunology. That's important for a few questions. And then we'll jump to cardio. And, and Okay, so, so when we do the PCV13, what is the mechanism behind the 23 PPSV and 13 PCV13? What is the mechanism? Like the immunological wise, this is the foundation one, of independent. Hmm? So one is conjugate, right? One is with conjugate. One is without conjugate. The PSV. I don't remember which one is conjugate now. I think PSV thirteen is the conjugate one, where you conjugate to induce the T cell immunity, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's yeah. a good job. Yeah. And then so, um, mm -hmm. the um, PSV, am I the one only answering or is it uh, for both of us? I don't know. I don't want to be too forward. No, no, no. You can go ahead. Yeah, you can go answer. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. And then the uh, other one is uh, without a conjugate and mostly it's going to induce a humoral um, um, immunity. Is that what you're looking for? I don't know. Okay, yeah, exactly. So there are two types. There, one, the polysaccharide, and there is the conjugate. Conjugate is stronger, obviously. So the polysaccharide uh, stimulate the B cell. So the polysaccharide attaches to the B cell, and the B cell will formulate antibodies and in moderate amount of antibodies. Okay, so that's the advantage is decreased incidence of replacement strain due to lack of mucosal immunity. Does it not? While the conjugate vaccine, as you said, like the polysaccharide goes to the B cell and the B cell takes it to the T cell. Okay? And the protein, sure. protein component allow activation of T cell receptor to increase level of high affinity antibodies with memory cell formation. So this, we need memory cell formation for people who are in dangerous situation. For example, elderly more than 65, patient HIV, cochlear implant, sickle cell anemia, acetylenia, chronic kidney disease, then we need the PCV-23, okay? After the PPSV and then PCV-23, we supplement that. But if you just have a chronic lung disease, heart failure, and uh, that's it, you just give them PPSV-23. So that's, that's they may, they, they like, they love these things. They always ask about it. I got this, this question on step one step two and i think in step three will be a question like this too so uh, they may ask about the mechanism behind it okay so patient this one uh, simple question after transfusion developed uh, anaphylaxis which is you know uh, asthma eczema and uh, blood pressure decrease generalized hives so what is what's causing that what immune IgA yeah, deficiency. Yeah, IgA yeah exactly IgA deficiency. So, so how do you manage that Oh, you have to give them a IgA um, deficient um, um, during the, you know, if they have, like, a, if they have to go through transfusion, you have to give them a blood that doesn't have a IgA antibodies. Okay, yeah, exactly. Washed, washed. Out of the cell. So this is the most common primary immune deficiency is IgA deficiency. So you can expect a question about that. So the, how does that present mostly asymptomatic? If it's present, can present to sinopulmonary and GI infections, recurrent infection, and associated with other, other autoimmune diseases, for example, celiac and atopy, asthma and eczema, okay? And anaphylaxis during transfusion. When you order labs, you will find low IgA and normal, everything else normal. So how do you manage it? Supportive therapy plus medical alert uh, bracelet for transfusion reaction for severe deficiency. Okay. All right. Okay, so that's okay. Someone is going to Egypt. What vaccine do you give him? Yeah, yeah, excellent. Yeah, thank you for answering. Yeah, it's hepatitis A. And what else? You do yellow fever too, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you give them yellow fever. So how about meningo meningococcal vaccine? When do you give them? 
for adults. Yeah, someone who's going to uh, like college. Cra- yeah, cr- like crowded. College. Yeah, college. Army, military. Asian countries, Sub-Saharan Africa, and uh, and the vaccine legally required for people who go to Hajj in Mecca, Saudi Arabia, and stuff like that. You see, those are those are important ones. Yeah, that's about it. You know when we give Nemo Hokal and we you know when we give rabies. Okay, so this the this is in special situation like Nemo Hokal and rabies. But generally for someone who's traveling, you give them yellow fever, meningococcal and hepatitis A. So that's so that's about it. So if you if you're doing a study and some of the people lost to follow up, what type of bias is that? It may may happen. Hmm? What's that again? So if you're doing a study, okay, and uh, as you follow them up, some of them they did not continue the study. What what do we call this bias? Hmm? I can't think of a name. If it's multiple choice, maybe. Yeah, it's a selection bias. Yeah. How about the study population differ from the target population due to non-random selection method? What do we call this bias? Wait, one more time. Okay, so this is what I'm going to I'm gonna discuss. I'm going to discuss the selection bias. It's very important and confusing, okay? Selection uh-huh. bias, there are different types of selection bias, okay? So I'm going to tell you different scenarios and tell me what type of selection bias is this. Okay. So, if the study population differs from the target population because there is non-random selection method. For example, I take people from the hospital, I study them for a I take people outside from the hospital. What do we call this bias? Is the vaccine bias? It's a sampling bias, ascertainment bias, okay? Does it? Sampling? Yeah. And then the second type of bias, when there is high non-response rate, to survey questionnaire can cause error okay if the non responder differ from the way resp- from the responder what do we call this bias i know is that non response bias is also like example of a selection bias excellent yes non response bias bias sample selection okay if the disease is studied using only hospital based patient may lead to result not applicable to target population that's a percussive bias Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's your right to so answer. So when you have exposure that happened long before the disease assessment can cause the study to miss the diseased patient that die early or recover, what do we call this bias? Let time. It's called prevalence bias, Neiman bias. Which one? It's called Neiman bias, prevalence bias. Can you repeat the definition again of yeah. prevalence? When the ex- exposures that happen long before the disease assessment can cause the study to miss diseased patient that die early or recover. So basically the exposure has happened before they started the study. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that's it's called Neiman prevalence. Never seen a question about it. So it looks like it's a low yield, but just keep it in the back of your head just in case. And uh, one last one is there is a significant loss of study par- participant may cause bias if they allow to follow up and differ from the remaining subject. If people who lost to follow up differ from the remaining subject. What do we call this bias? What type of selection bias is that? Is it attrition bias? Excellent, yeah, it's attrition bias. Okay, uh, so you know recall bias and observer bias, those are observational. There's another bias, then when the subject over or under report exposure history, what do we call that? Recall. No, this is a reporting bias. Recall if the subject common in retrospective studies when the subject negative outcome are more likely to report certain exposure than the control subject okay that's the thing and the observer bias is that when the observer misclassified data due to individual difference in interpretation of the 
of preconceived expectation regarding the study. They always love to bring this example of uh, renal biopsy in African American pathologists more likely to report the focal glomerulonephritis that's more common, focal segmental glomerulonephritis more common in African Americans. So that's more, so this is like uh, one type of observer bias. I believe. Okay. Okay, if, if the test improves survival, what do we call this bias? Like you think when you order the test that detected way before the disease happened, for example, prostatic cancer. Okay, a new screening test you just detected seven years before, you, you detected two years earlier before Let the symptom happened. Huh? Lead time it's bias. Yeah, it's a lead time bias. And make sure you differentiate that from length time bias. Length time bias detects slowly progressive diseases. And the rapid diseases die, people. Like, for example, gastric cancer. Like, some of them mild, some of them harsh. So that can happen length time. So it's different, the length time and lead time bias. Okay, okay so another example. If the, <clears throat> if the test of a result, 200, like for cholesterol, okay? One time showed 200, one time 190, one time 184. What is that? Is that reliable, valid? What do you think? Oh, okay. Not reliable, not valid. What do you think? Give me like a... It's not... One is not reliable. Excellent. Yeah, it's a not reliable. So what is the latency period? You're asking for the definition? Yeah, yeah. What do you what do you see that? What is that? One. Hmm? Yeah, go ahead. Dormant when the disease is dormant. Yeah, and this is like when the sometimes when they give a placebo and they give a statin, when they follow them in three years, there's no significant in LDL. Okay, but hmm. when they you follow them in five years. The people with the statin, they have decrease in LDL, but the placebo not. So that's what we call latency period. There's a couple of questions about that, so just keep it in mind. Okay, okay it's like just simple question. If the test has an, if the 35 year old female had a negative FNA, and she asked you, uh, she asks you, what are the chances that I really do not have breast cancer? What is, what is she asking about? MPV. Yeah, not good. How about the positive predictive value? How would she? How would the question would be different if she asked about? Yeah, negative predictive value, right? Yeah, yeah. But if it if it uh, if the positive predictive value, how? How can I change the oh. question to be the positive predictive value that I can see? So if the test is positive and then she asks how to whatever, how do I put it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> how likely I'm positive, how likely. I'm positive. Yes, how likely that this test is truly positive or something like that. Yeah. No, no, no. Something is very, like, it's always, like, it's crazy concepts. That oh, always, you say the probability, I don't know. Huh? Yeah, it's always, yeah, it's annoying. Like, when you have null, okay, so when you have the confidence interval, if the null value outside the confidence interval, okay, so <laughs> what's, what's the 99% confidence interval and what is the 95 confidence interval? Like just keep it in mind, just in case they ask you about it. What do you What do you think? So, um, ninety ninety nine percent means a three three SDD right interval. Ninety five ninety five is two SD interval. Sixty eight yeah. is one SD. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Yeah, something I want you to keep in mind: the p value. You know, you remember the p value if it's less than zero point zero five. That's less than nine. That's ninety-five percent confidence interval. But if it is less than zero point zero one, that's ninety-nine percent confidence interval. Okay. 
just keep it in mind, just in case they ask about it, okay? You got the idea? Oh, you're asking it in reference to the confidence interval. Yeah, yeah, p-value and re relative to the confidence interval, yeah. If it's less than 0 0.01, that means 99% confidence interval. Okay, so this is more confident, okay? Because, you know, it makes sense, you see? When oh, less than 0 0.05, the probability, like p-value, what does it mean, p-value? It means the probability of being the steady is is wrong, okay? That's what the p-value means. So when it's 0 0.05, how much is left from 0 0.05? 95, right? If you add 95 plus 5, that's 100, okay? So that's very important. Why do not confuse these things? So if it's less than 0 0.05, that means there is a chance of, of our study